Hi, everybody. My name is Gloria Giovanelli, and I want to talk to you today about health. And what really is health? And where do we get it? Well, health, we often think of health, you know, when we look at pictures on our Instagram of people in really great shape, and they look super fit, and they're out in the sunshine. And we often think of them as healthy, or people who are really strong, people who can do great feats of strength, we think of them as healthy. Or maybe somebody has great skin, we automatically assume they're healthy. And here's a big catch. Here's one that tends not to be true. We assume that because somebody has a type of body shape that we like, whether it be thin, whether it be curvy, however you want to describe it, we assume that that's health. Well, really, sometimes those things reflect the health that's already inside of us, but none of those things are actually health. So when we're really healthy, yes, we are physically well, and we're going to talk more about how to create that physical aspect of health. But health also includes how we are in our hearts, how we are in our emotions, how we are in our minds. So it actually doesn't matter. If you do all the green juices and sprouts and protein shakes and whatever it is that you think is going to make you physically healthy, you could do all that stuff. You could take lots of vitamins and all of these things that we believe contributes to our health. You could do it all. But if you feel unwell in your mind, if you are regularly agitated in your mind, frustrated, sad, insecure, lacking in self-confidence, if you're constantly reacting strongly to other people in your world, that would reflect that there's much more room for growth in your health because health means that as the entire being of us, every single aspect of us, is flowing together. And health is going to change day to day. You know, my my best today might not be as good as my best tomorrow. But with all of the resources that I have right now, in the most relaxed way, with an easy mind, if I put that into my day, well, that's my very best today. And I'm not going to p- compare that to yesterday. And I'm not going to compare it to tomorrow. So The part that most people miss when it comes to health is the mind and the emotions. Have you ever stopped to observe yourself to see how quickly do you react to people? How quickly do you think other people are wrong? How quickly do you get agitated by other people? How quickly do you allow what people say and do to make you feel badly about yourself? If that's happening, It means that no matter what your physical status, no matter what your blood sugar or your blood pressure, there's room to grow in your health. And really, the part of health that that brings us into all the other areas is your mental and emotional well-being. And that's why this new academy is so important, because it's going to help you develop and give you all the tools you need to bring in that key component of health so many other people miss that all of the gurus and the exercise pros and the diet pros they often miss this point but you're not going to miss it because you're on this portal and you are learning how to develop that part of you that creates a real wellness that creates real health and what i find is people who have the most love in their hearts for other people People who let that love flow and really, um, really freely express who they are, those people often have the best physical health as well. And they often defy the numbers. So people who are very much comfortable in themselves, and whether that came naturally or whether they had to develop it over time, like most people do, it doesn't matter. But when you're comfortable in yourself, and you allow your light to shine however it wants to shine, you'll find that your physical health grows as well. And you can live longer than people think you say you will. You'll live stronger than people think that you should. Because really what matters is this love that's inside of you as it radiates out from you. And you're going to learn how to allow that to happen more and more through this academy. As that love that energy, that mental, spiritual, and emotional health flows through you. It flows through your cells too. 
It flows through your bones. It flows through your muscles and your nerves. And that creates a blueprint of radiant health. But now let's talk about some of the more practical physical things that you need for general health. Well, I don't think that I need to tell you guys that one of the biggest culprits in bringing down our health is sugar. And that's sugar in most of its forms. So unless it comes from a fruit or a vegetable, unless it's like in the food already, anything that's taken out, you know, like coconut sugar, right? Everybody says it's a healthier sugar. Well, it might be a little bit, but I'm going to suggest that if you really want to be at your all-time best, if you really want to have an abundance of energy, you really want to be physically healthy, take as little sugar as you possibly can. And if you need that bit of sweetness, well, have some fruit. It's going to be tied to fiber. And that fiber is going to slow it down in your body. It's going to let your body regulate its insulin better. That fiber in there is also going to be good for your gut. So if you're taking in something, you want that bit of sweetness, it's much better to take it in in the form of fruit than it is in the form of like, you know, a refined chocolate bar. And it doesn't mean that you'll never have those things. It just means really try to keep them as minimal as possible. Okay, so we want to avoid sugar. I think everybody already knows that. But what do we want to take into the body? Because we really have to saturate the body with nutrients, okay, to develop optimum health. We want to bring in all of the nutrition that we can because that's all of the cells in the body, all of the organs, they need energy to thrive. And the way that we get energy, is we bring that in through our food. And the sun, the sunlight also gives us a lot of energy too. So if you can, there are things like, Green juices or even fruit juices, but juices are a great way to get lots and lots of nutrition in just a glass. So sometimes we may not have access to large quantities of food or very exciting things, but if you can start experimenting with some juices and you don't actually even need a juicer to do it, there's lots of different ways. I'll tell you one or two in just a moment. Um, but bringing in some fresh juices into your life, even one a day would go a long way to, to help building your health. A really simple one is to squeeze some lemons into water. That's juice. You've got your fresh squeezed lemon juice. And maybe you don't have a juicer, but maybe you have a blender. Well, you can blend up the fruits and veggies and you strain them and you get the juice from that. Let's say you don't have either one of those things. Well, focusing on the ones that are easy to squeeze like lemons, that'll give you something to do as well. Maybe many of you have heard about juicing celery. It's sort of a big craze at the moment, but I think it's more than that. I think the celery juice provides a huge amount of nutrition. It helps bring down your appetite. It helps feel you more centered in yourself. So if there's any way that you can get your hands on fresh celery juice, I'd really, really recommend that you do that. And if you can't do it, don't worry, we'll get the nutrition in in other ways. So here's another thing that um, maybe as younger people, we don't always really enjoy, but salads. This is, well, this is true for everyone, but it's especially true if you struggle with your weight, okay? I did for years and years and years, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in my next session section on eating disorders. But one of the main ways that I got into control of my weight was I started making ginormous salads and I'd load them up. Now, first I'd load them up with, you know, leafy greens and lettuces and spinach and tomatoes and onions and things like that, peppers and as many veggies that I could find that I liked. I love them all now. I'd put them onto the salad, whatever I could get my hands on. And then I would add in other little things that I liked. So I might like some nuts. I might like some seeds. I might like a, to make a special type of salad dressing that's really tasty to me. I might like to put some berries on the salad. Um, I put on whatever else 
that would make it taste good to me to get the other items down. And eventually, over time, I started to love those salads. I started to love my vegetables in all their forms. But here's what it did for me with my weight. It made me feel really full. And I would still have a lunch or dinner on top of the salad, but I'd make a really big salad. And then when I felt full, well, then I just naturally started eating less of other things. I didn't actually tell myself, you can't have that. Don't eat that. Even though I tried to make better and better choices, what I did was I filled my body up first on the nutrient dense foods. And as a result of that, I automatically started eating less of other things. And then I just tightened it up more and more and more over time. So what I'm saying with that is the foods that have the most nutrients, fruits and vegetables, number one, nuts and seeds, number two. There's actually, there's a man named Dr. Joel Farman. He's a wonderful medical doctor and he has an acronym that he calls G-bombs. And I'm gonna share G-bombs with you if you haven't heard it. So his top recommended foods are G, greens, berries, onions, mushrooms, and what's my other B? Berries, onions, mushrooms, and beans. <laughs> beans are actually the first B and berries are the second B. So sometimes people think that eating well is expensive. And I know we all have different needs um, and different, um, different needs and different abilities. You know, we have different resources. We can't all necessarily afford the same types of foods. But the amazing thing is beans are the most inexpensive foods on the planet. All the beans, black beans, kidney beans, soya beans, every kind of bean, even chickpeas and lentils. These are so filled with fiber and nutrients and they make you feel satisfied. So if I went out and I had a McDonald's, which I don't, I haven't had McDonald's in I don't even know how long, um, decades probably. <laughs> so if I went out and had McDonald's or a takeaway, I would eat it and I might feel full, but probably 30 minutes later, I'd be hungry again. And even if then I took something nutritious, I would still find I'd want to snack, 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 because I started off by putting in food that had no nutritional value, that had other items in it, that cause me to want to eat more, crave more, that make me always feel like I need more food. Uh, but if I start out with the food that has the nutrition in it, your, your G-bombs, your greens, your beans, your onions, your mushrooms, your berries, and even your tomatoes, your seeds, um, then if I do have anything else, it's much less. So beans are really inexpensive. You can make big quantities of beans for small quantities of money. And that includes, like I said, things like chickpeas and lentils. And you flavor them as you like with your spices and other things. But again, while acknowledging that we all have different levels of resources and what we have access to, eating healthy can be the most inexpensive way to eat once we learn how to do it. Now, I don't have time in this module to explain everything about how to eat healthy inexpensively, but I can tell you, get your beans in and allow them to fill you up to make you feel satisfied because they digest slowly. They move slowly through the gut. They encourage good bacteria in your gut. They help your um, elimination system. But here's a really cool thing, because I know, I was going to say young people today, nearly everybody today is concerned about their weight. Here's a really cool fact about beans, okay? It's called the second meal effect. Maybe you've heard of this thing called blood sugar and glycemic index. And all that means is when you eat something, if it makes your blood sugar rise really fast, if it spikes your blood sugar, it's got a high glycemic index and you're more likely to get sick, you're more likely to put on weight and you're more likely to get diabetes if you eat foods that spike your blood sugar. So we're looking for foods that do the opposite of that. We wanna keep it stable, okay? So when you eat beans, at the meal that you have your beans in, 
Well, that meal, it lowers the overall glycemic index or blood sugar response of the whole meal just by having beans or chickpeas or lentils with that meal. But here's where it gets really, really cool. The second meal effect is when at the next meal, even if you're not having beans, it lowers the glycemic effect of that meal too. So both at the meal that you eat your beans, chickpeas, lentils, your legumes, and the next meal, the overall entire meal has less of an impact on your blood sugar. That means less weight gain. It means more constant energy. It means you're less likely to put on weight and get diabetes. And it means that you will long term be setting yourself up for real health and real success at managing your eating and your habits. So just start if you're not already having them, start by introducing them slowly. And let's say you, you feel that you're very, you know, beans don't sit well with you. Well, I know somebody who they thought they couldn't eat beans at all. They would just get bloated and gassy and they just didn't feel well. They started out at each meal taking one bean. And when they could manage one bean, they added in two. And when they could manage two, they added in three. Now they can eat beans at every meal if they choose. So you could try that as an experiment, but my real message here is that beans are extremely nutritious. They're anti-cancer. They're so good. And they're inexpensive. And they will really help you set yourself up for long-term health. So if you forget everything else that I say about what to eat, just think of G-bombs, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and then you can add on seeds and tomatoes onto that as well, okay? So what else can you do to help create physical health? Well, we know we need to move. Not everybody needs to be a bodybuilder. Not everybody needs to be a swimsuit model, but we do need to move. We need to keep the blood circulating. We need to challenge our bodies. And also, because again, diabetes is epidemic in the world. Physical exercise, even if it's done for just a few minutes, but with intensity, it actually also helps control your blood sugars. Okay, so let's say you don't have any exercise equipment. You don't know what to do, and you're, you don't like other people seeing you move and exercise. Well, you can run in place. Run in place for 60 seconds as hard as and as fast as you can, as if a tiger was chasing you, run in place for 60 seconds. And I promise you, you'll feel that you've worked out, okay? And even in that 60 seconds, if you really give it your all, your all out effort, you will actually release a hormone that helps you burn fat. You'll also improve your body's ability to bring down your blood sugar in a stable way. What's another one? A squat, okay? So squatting up and down in place, um, start out maybe with just 10, go to 20. And then when you get stronger and stronger, do that exercise squatting in place as fast as you can, but with good form, okay? Do that as fast as you can for 60 seconds. And you'll really, really feel that you've worked out and you'll do the same thing. You'll release growth hormone that helps you burn fat, build mus muscle, makes you younger, makes you faster. Okay, and you'll feel a difference and you'll get your blood moving. You'll release the hormones that make you feel good and it'll help you feel better about yourself because you're just taking action to support you. That's really what this is about. Health is about you. It's not about looking a certain way. It's just about you feeling so good and so strong in yourself because you know you're giving yourself the right type of attention. So what else can we do? We have a bit of physical movement. Um, you don't need any exercise equipment to get in shape. You don't need any. If you have it, great, but you don't need it. We want to get in those G-bombs. Thank you, Dr. Joel Furman. Okay, as many raw fruits and vegetables as you can take is going to help. If you can get juices in, that's even um, more amazing. Don't worry if you can't, but if you can, please get it. If you can do it, do it. If you can't, 
Don't worry, you're going to get it from elsewhere. Get your sunshine. Okay, you don't need a lot. Depending on where you live, you may be, have access to a lot of sunshine. You may have access to very little. So obviously, if it's very bright and sunny where you are, you need less time in the sun. And if it's not bright and sunny where you are, you're going to need a little bit of more time and get as much of your skin exposed to the sunlight as possible. Okay, those really are the most simplest basic components of building health. Okay, breathing. Breathing is one that people just forget. When we get stressed or uncomfortable, we don't realize we stop breathing properly. Take some, just take a moment and pause. And now you don't need to breathe fast or even, you don't even need to breathe too deeply, but just take a nice breath, but do it in a conscious way. Breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. Did you notice the difference? Did you notice your whole body change, your mind responds, your energy responds? Everything just settles down. So tuning in regularly to your breath and saying, when was the last time I took a nice deep breath? Am I breathing fully or am I breathing shallowly? We want to breathe fully. Think about a baby or think about your pet. When they breathe, their bellies go out and in. So have a nice belly breath and relax. Water. So the more toxins we take in, the more we need to flush them out. So that means if currently you are somebody who takes a lot of junk food, who maybe takes a lot of toxins in their food, or maybe you breathe, you're living in an area where there's a lot of air pollution, you're probably going to need to drink more water. If you're a person who has a very clean diet, you eat lots of fruits and veggies and they're raw, so they're already loaded with lots of water, you probably need to drink less water. But the main thing is just make sure that you're hydrated, okay? So try not to wait until you feel thirst. Remember to drink liquids regularly if you can to keep your body hydrated. And again, I know we're all in different different positions and some of these some of these tips may be more challenging for other people to achieve. It doesn't matter. You just do the best you can in the circumstances you have. And when you do all that you can do, life gets in behind you and does the rest. Remember that. When you do everything you can, you have this invisible means of support that comes in the form of life energy and it gets behind you and it does what you can. So we don't have to know how it does it. We don't have to know what that's going to mean or how it's going to manifest. Just know you do everything you can. Life will get in and do the rest. So that's really the basics of health. You may say, but God, I really thought it was going to be more complicated than that. But no, that's the problem is we think it's complicated. Get the cleanest water we can. Breathe as well as we can with as much time out in nature and a bit of sunshine. If you can get your juices in, great. Even a bit of lemon and some water. And your g bombs, your greens, your beans, your onions, your mushrooms, your berries, your seeds, your nuts, and even add some tomatoes in there. And beyond that, what we talked about at the very beginning of this was your mental and emotional well-being. No, that the more relaxed you are in yourself, I don't mean relaxed as in lying out on your couch. I mean more relaxed in your being. The less reactive you are, the less judgmental you are, the more health automatically radiates through you. So what I want you to take from this is health is your birthright. Health is your natural state. It's your blueprint. You're already programmed with great health. And we just want to remove those things that cover it over and tap into that blueprint that's already inside of you. And certain foods... And certain activities do that better than others. So thank you so much. I hope you found this little bit on health helpful. And we can always add some more details later on if you have any questions. Thank you. <music>